Hi guys, today we're going to talk about local versus remote developers. Uh, at Easy Peasy Forms we have a mixture of both programmers that are in our office and remote programmers. Yes, yeah, so a mixture of remote and local developers works really well for us. Um, being in a small town in New Zealand, we do find that it's hard to encourage all of the talent to one place. So we sort of branch out a little bit. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and there are some advantages to having remote programmers. You know, there is a, a huge talent pool, obviously. Yeah, it's worldwide. Uh, there are some challenges as well, such as you don't really want a release to go down when your key people are asleep. Right, just with the different time zones. Yes. So um, we have found we had a problem in the past when we had a release done, didn't we? And it was it was to the test site. Yeah, I think or... test got mixed up with live. Yeah, uh, the databases were run the wrong way. Or That's something. right, and of course because the developer did it was in a different time zone to us. We didn't know about the problem until it was too late, and our clients had yeah. started noticing. So just making sure that. You communicate these release times correctly and make sure that you work together with the time zones. It's really important. Yeah, it's a bit like an incident that happened the other night where um, a new feature in New Zealand is you get alerts if there's like an earthquake or a disaster or anything like that. And the developers who were working on this feature were from Europe. Yeah. Yeah. So we all got woken up at 1.30 like in the morning with this. Be, be, be. Yeah, it was an idea, but understandable because yes. we work with remote developers as well. So I understood it from that point of view. However, I do also understand it from the client point of yeah, view. Yeah, some people were, were kind of raged about. I was raging. Up. I was <laughs> raging, but understood the yeah. situation. So I'm not everyone would though. Would no. they? Uh, another really important point with remote staff is to have regular meetings. Uh, catching up with them, ensuring that you know you get to know them as people as well. They're mm -hmm. not just like staff in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, well that's right. I mean, social conversations as well as talking about the project that you're both yeah. working on and everything. It is important. I think. Yeah, uh, we use Google Meet for that. Yeah, uh, and we also use a bit of Skype as well. Yeah, because you know it can be quite lonely. They're like just at home by themselves, probably working away. Yeah, um, and they need a bit of social interaction. Yeah, I love those meetings, eh? Yeah. So good. Yeah, it's good to see what they're up to. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, with our local guys, I think one of the biggest advantages is just that they're there. Right? Yeah, right there. Whenever there's an issue or anything, you can say, can you come have a look at this? Yeah. And they'll come and have a look at it and, and fix it or tell you it's a big job, little job, but they can see it mm. live. You know, there's no Skype. Hey. Yeah. Where are you? Can you yeah. look at this? And then team viewer gets involved and it just takes a little bit longer. Yeah, it does. Mm. So you just can't beat in-person meetings. Yeah, so I mean Skype and... Um, what do we use? Meet. Yeah, so Skype and Google Meet and things like that. They are good, really good for your remote developers, but that personal, in-person, face-to-face, real life, no yeah. technology type conversation is always a little bit great, yeah. Little bit better. Yeah. So that is definitely an advantage of having in-house developers. Yes. So another thing, if you're an HDR or remote developer, I think, or remote contractor, remember that you that the other people can't see what you're doing. Yeah. So it is just super important to be really responsive and to make sure that you're reaching out as well. If you get stuck Make sure that you're, you know, you're communicating really clearly and effectively because um, that's where issues can occur if you're, you, you don't, you're just stuck on a problem and you're not, you're not communicating it. Yeah, I totally agree. And then you've got me on the other end. Like, how far are we along with this? Yeah, is it you know, done yet? Is it done yet? And yeah. if you're sitting there freaking out because you're not sure on what to do, I can't, I can't help. Yeah, you know? that's right. Cool. Okay, so to summarise. Local versus remote programmers. Um, we use a mixture of both and find both perfect for us. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's definitely advantages to having you know full time in the office stuff as well. Mm -hmm. um, both have to be managed really differently. Mm. You know, um, yeah. when you see someone face to face, it's you just naturally do manage them differently to someone remotely. So um, just. 
keep that in mind. Yeah, and I think if you have remote staff, catching up with them once a year or so in person is, is really good to, to build that relationship as well. Yeah. Awesome. Well, like and subscribe, guys. Thank you. Dido, Dido, Dido.